TV burp. Nazi monkey on EastEnders. Isn't that great? Yeah. Flipping marvellous. <laughs> on topic of cancer, Lily Allen falls out with Lady Gaga. Jack Meadows investigates outbreak of wind on the bill. And we believe the people who supplied it used it and then tried to hide it. But he who smelt it surely dealt it. <laughs> Undercover princesses where ladies who are princesses in their home countries come over here and try to steal our men. So, what are their names? My name is Xenia Gabriela Florence Sophie Iris, Princess of Saxonia. Huh? Princess Vanuji, Sheila, Cinderella, and Sally. You what? I'm Princess Alia, Sultana Babi of Palasinor. Lovely. <laughs> so, they've all got an idea of what sort of fella they're after. I like Hugh Grant. Prince Harry and William. Hugh Grant. Sean Connery. I want to met Robbie Williams. Prince Philip. <laughs> Not sure you're his type, love. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. Hey. The girls are holed up in a house in Essex and they're getting plenty of attention from the local guys and just check out some of the chat-up lines. Off the pitch, ever-confident Gabby is giving Alia a masterclass in meeting men. Ever been on a ferry over here, have you? <laughs> <laughs> the weather hasn't been up too much, has it? The weather hasn't been up too much. Slam dunk right in the back of the neck. That's the guys from Essex. Far smoother was the fella Princess Shayla bumped into in the Asda. Paul from Tobago. See how much from lover like me. Yeah, but not this one. These are quite yeah. big. You like mushrooms? <laughs> Mr. Mushroom Lover. <laughs> Pick up the mushroom from the woodland floor I put them in my basket and you're begging for more A little bit of garlic, I cook them in a pan With chicken in a pie or a nice little flan Mr. Mushroom Lover yeah. The Mushroom Lover song <laughs> Yeah Ladies do like mushrooms, though, don't they? Long mushrooms, fat mushrooms. I'm very fortunate in that my wife likes button mushrooms. <laughs> Mr. Mushroom Lover. <laughs> Princess Shayla was given a job in an Essex cafe where she hoped to meet men, but she did seem a little fussy. She certainly didn't fancy the bloke on table one. No, I'm not the guy with the bloke. I don't find him attractive. He's too fat. He's too pink. He's too serious. He's too tough. He's too pink. He's too pink. He's too pink and he's too huge. Bit fussy. Who could the huge pink man at table one be? He's too pink. He's too serious. He's too tough. He's too pink. He's too pink. Oh, no! to our old Indian man trying to get on TV of the week. <laughs> and that's because here on Earth, humans have the best seats in the solar system. <laughs> Sky One's body language secrets now. And this week, body language expert and Shaw Taylor lookalike, Peter Collette, set about deconstructing people's attempts at humour. So, how do you actually tell a joke and make it work? Search me. <laughs> I wish I knew. Make things a lot easier. Although, having said that, I find that by turning to that camera, it makes whatever I say much funnier. <laughs> Chippy chip. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. I can virtually... I can virtually say anything and get a laugh on that camera. <laughs> Hoops. <laughs> the body language team...
staged a dinner party to study how different people use humour in different ways. One of the diners was Martin, who fancied himself as a bit of a wag. Next we have Martin, who refers to himself as a young Peter Kay. <laughs> Big talk. <laughs> so, let's see Martin at work. In the island that I kind of stayed in, where they did a lot of cheap tattooing, Koh Panyang and Koh Tao, they were doing bamboo tattooing, I think it's called, and apparently it's Really, Is that really where they sit at the other end of the room with the bamboo really shoes? That put me doesn't put any, um, <laughs> Hardest job in the world. <laughs> Mind you, we had a good audience in Dominic. He is constantly displaying his appreciation of the other guy's humour with facial expressions and gestures. When responding to someone else's jokes, Dominic throws his head back and pinches his eyes, signalling that he's completely overwhelmed and amused by what's been said. Show came up with an invaluable tip for dealing with a bum gag. If you say something and it doesn't go to plan, there's one word that you can say at the end of any joke that's gone wrong, and it will work every time. Anyway. And that's it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I might try that. <laughs> Peter explained how some of the top people were able to use humour to make themselves seem more attractive to voters. Barack Obama came in for special praise. Even when he succeeded in clinching the top job, the President of the United States continues to entertain us. Now, Sasha and Malia aren't here tonight because they're grounded. You can't just take Air Force One on a joyride to Manhattan. <laughs> I don't care whose kids you are. Anyway. <laughs> well, let's go now to Muncaster Castle in the Lake District for the Roy McGrath vehicle, The Lakes. The castle is haunted by a jester, as Peter Frost Pennington explained. And then we have the ghost of Tom Fool, Thomas Skelton, who was uh, the jester here many centuries ago. No one ever sees him, but he still plays tricks. <laughs> Bit of a prankster. Let's hear some of the gags he got up to. He used to sit under the chestnut tree, which is 600 years old, and if you came by and asked the way back to Manchester and he didn't like the look of you, he pointed you down to the quicksands and he drowned a few people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, drowned a few people. <laughs> That's <is> hilarious. <laughs> Dominic? That's so funny. <laughs> Elsewhere in the Lake District, <laughs> head of tour operator Mountain Goat, Sue Todd, had some great news. We got a letter to say that we have been nominated for an award, the Route 1 Minibus Operator of the Year Award. <laughs> Better than the Route 1 Minibus Operator of the Year Awards. <laughs> and so off Sue went to get herself a suitable frock without much luck. Sue hasn't worn a dress since Sister Linda's wedding 27 years ago, so it's quite an experience. But I think she's quite enjoying it, really, secretly, underneath. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Right. <laughs> 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 I'm ready. Not sure I even like the skirt. I think it's oh, yeah. far too much cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> How about this one, Harry? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's the one! That's the one! Good luck! Well, it's the last show in the series, and, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> and people often ask me, how do the big stars take me making jokes about them on TV, but, well, we have made quite a few jokes about David Dimbleby this series. Did it? <laughs>
But half the fun of Dimble's show is seeing some of the ancient knickknacks he turns up, often old versions of things we have today. His emblem was the tiger. He once said, I'd rather live two days as a tiger than 200 years as a sheep. And he had this extraordinary toy made. It's a kind of toy for adults. Mm, doesn't look like an adult toy. <laughs> If I wind the handle, the tiger apparently lets out a fearsome growl and the figure here, who is a European, screams in terror and agony. I'll just put my hand there to stop it from falling and start the winding. Here we go. <laughs> The scream. Where's the growl? Oh! That was the growl of the tiger. Oh, frightening me, lifelike. Hang on. What's that? <laughs> Very aggressive. No wonder there's hardly any of them left. <laughs> Dimbles clocking up the old air miles, though. This week, as well as India, he found himself in Philadelphia eating a Philly cheese steak sandwich. But he was then faced with a dilemma. Philadelphia, the Greek for the city of brotherly love. And now the city of the Philly cheese steak. And at which end to start at. <laughs> It's so difficult, isn't it? I mean, I can't help agreeing with him. I mean, I like the left-hand end of the Philly cheesesteak sandwich, and then I like the right-hand end of the Philly cheesesteak sandwich. But which is better? <gasps> There's only one way to find out. Wolf whistling metal detector on EastEnders. <laughs> Things get personal on Horizon. It expanded from something which is quite small and crinkly to something incredibly large. <laughs> and an Indian goat is a big fan of the K-Factor on Seven Ages of Britain. The state of Rajasthan. <laughs> Louis Spenz and co are up to at Pineapple Dance Studios. I'm going to get the pats to snap me. Snapping someone really important. <laughs> I'm pleased to tell you, Mr. Spence, that your examination is normal. <laughs> this week, would be pop star Andrew Stone was grooving up ready for a gig with his band Starman, and it meant a lot to him. Yeah, I've got a lot riding on Starman. I've sold my house for it. I've lost everything I possibly have ever owned to make this happen. Oh, he's lost everything he's ever owned. Fingers crossed it's all going to plan. So, <laughs> over to Starman manager Rob for the latest news on the gig. Rob's convinced the gig is going to be a landmark musical event. We've already sold about 18 or 19 tickets. <laughs> Said, never mind. <laughs> Andrew had his own verdict on how the gig went. That was fat with a PH. <laughs> or fat with a PR. <laughs> it was nice to see Sally doing a Carol Vorderman impression on Emmerdale this week. Good. <laughs> Staying with me, 
music. This week, we finally found out what the words are to the Emmerdale theme song. Yeah. In fact, what the cast do is sing the names of different sources along to the music. So it goes... Barbecue sauce, soya sauce, Worcester sauce, cranberry sauce, mint sauce, tomato sauce, HB sauce, hollandaise sauce, red sauce, dumb. And I know this is because we just caught Zach singing the end of the Emmerdale Source song on Monday. <laughs> so that's cleared that up. <laughs> Elsewhere, Ashley and wife Laurel were being watched by Mystery Peeping Tom. Say, I did enjoy seeing Joseph's breasts this week. Left me quite confused. <laughs> Elsewhere on Holby, there was a lady in a coma, but her son remained positive. I need to sort some kit. Oh, she looks great, doesn't she? Has she done something with her hair? <laughs> In fact, he was so pleased, he seemed to be planning a Jewish pub crawl. Have you ever heard of the Anunnaki? No. What about Moses, the Ark of the Covenant, the burning bush, the, the golden calf? <laughs> All good pubs. <laughs> My favourite's the rabbi's arms. <laughs> Although you do have to take your own pork scratchings. <laughs> Which brings us to our highest Hercat of the week. I've got a few things I need to sort out with her. Her cat. <laughs> Let's just see what's going on down at Albert Square, shall we? K-Factor, so you think you can knit, has been built on a lie? I'm afraid so. Well, where does that leave us? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, OK, if you say so. That was the head of ITV. He says they can't risk another voting scandal. The final's off! <laughs> oh, I'm kidding! There's no one on the end of that phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back in the autumn, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Before we announce the winner, let's say a final hello to those that didn't make it through. Just a small town girl. Living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going Smile, they can share the 
the duck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And to accept the award, the person who brought him into this world from Croydon, it's Andy. Yeah. Astonished, amazed, and very grateful. Congratulations! That's all from us here. Thanks for watching. See you in the autumn. If you've missed a recent episode of Harry Hill's TV Burp, you can watch it with ITV Player, available at itv.com slash ITV Player, or on BT Vision and Virgin Media Digital TV On Demand. Well, next tonight, would your family accept Ant and Dec's invitation to push the button? Are you married? I am it.